What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Face Your Freedom. Guys, in this episode, we have a special guest for you. His name is Mike Swig. He is essentially a professional traveler. He's been traveling for about 10 years. He's been to over 80 countries. And the cool part is that he's done most of it for free. He's gonna be teaching travel hacking, how to travel for free, travel cheaply, see the world. He's actually done over $150,000 in free travel over the past 10 years, and he's about to show us how. So we will see you guys in there. Welcome to the Face Your Freedom Show, where we talk all about creating a life of freedom, walking your own path, and pursuing your purpose. My name is Alan Howard. And I'm James Weston. We are two entrepreneurs best known for taking a leap off the beaten path and pursuing a life of freedom and self-discovery. Let's get into it. All right, y'all ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Face Your Freedom. Guys, we have an awesome episode planned for you today. I'm here with my co-host, Alan Howard. What's up, guys? As well as a good friend of ours. He goes by Swig. Mike Swig. Mike Swig. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Mike, thanks for being here, man. Guys, this episode's really cool because Mike is essentially like a professional traveler, if you can yeah. call it that. Um, he's yeah, been definitely. to over 80 countries. He's been traveling for over 10 years. And really, he's developed this really unique skill set for, I guess, what you would call travel hacking, which is essentially traveling for free or traveling really cheaply and being able to experience a lot of the world. So guys, um, you guys have known each other for quite a bit now. Yeah, over a year, about a year. Yeah, we met playing Tejo. Tejo, yeah. Explosive (laughs) game with uh, the national sport of Columbia. Yeah, it's like horseshoes, but it blows up at the end. It's like with gunpowder or something. It's pretty cool. It is really fun. Yeah, so we met uh, about a year ago and we just kind of reconnected recently. For sure, so for sure. Appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah. 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 You, you. So Mike had reached out after he saw one of our episodes and that's kind of how we reconnected. You're back in town. So that was cool. Yeah. I was really impressed. I was like, this is one of the best shows I've seen awesome. on YouTube oh, in like you, a man. long time. Awesome, like the bro. content, the production, everything's appreciate impressive. It. Now you're here. Let's yeah, go. Let's All do right. it. <laughs> so Mike, why don't we start off with kind of telling people how you got started in this because you got started at a really young age. I mean, you were 18, 19, right. your first international trip. Definitely. Um, just let's start there. Yeah, an idea. so I got started with study abroad program through my university. So I was studying at the University of Missouri, was interested in finance, but also really just kind of intrigued with international business. Sure. And I was like, all right, study abroad makes sense. One of my good friends really wanted to go to Italy. He was, his name's Mario, he's Italian, like yeah. Italian American. <laughs> Mario from Italy. So I was like, exactly, let's, let's go do this. Like we spent a summer there and I absolutely just like fell in love with Europe. Uh, sure. And the study abroad program was great. I was able to like, it was actually a pretty intense learning experience. So. Yeah. 50% of the class was Italians, 50% wow. Americans. So you kind of had this like cross-cultural experience, mm. learning actually like good international business courses. Awesome. And then also like outside, just like learning how to travel. Like I was taking groups of my friends to different cities and different countries and I was the the one organizing everything. Yeah. And it was just kind of like this travel 101 where I was just learning all aspects of traveling and just kind of like loved it. So. Yeah. Uh, one of the cool things during the, the study abroad program, one of the organizers was like, hey, you're really you know good at this. You'd be a great fit for becoming one of the study abroad student managers. Cool. And she kind of planted that idea in my mind. And I was like, all right, I would love to do this. So I applied for this two year sort of internship where you're working for the university. Wow. Um, and they selected me to be the study abroad manager for Prague, a country and city that I'd never been to. Yeah. Huh. So. I was super excited to get the to get the job, sure. but I was a little scared. They're like, "All right, you know, this program said seven students past year; those are the biggest year ever." Mm. And wow. they're like, "If we don't get to fifteen, we have to close it down." Wow! And I was like, "Oh my god, this is like I have to promote, like, do all the marketing, do some marketing for it, do as all well. the course creation, actually teaching a course through the university." Wow! So it was like a lot of like all aspects of creating an online course, but like in person through the university. And how old were you when you did that? I was like 19, 20. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of responsibility yeah. for 19 that's or 20 a cool to do that. experience though at that age. Yeah, so it was really one of these things where I was just like, all right, I was loving like my university experience, but this was just the thing that was like, I was really passionate about. For sure. And so we grew the program to like 25 people that wow. year. Wow, Just like okay. anybody who would like have a conversation to me, I'd be like, hey, have you thought about <laughs> studying abroad? Like, if have you, you heard think of Prague? It, I haven't yeah. been, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's, I heard it's awesome, like just showing photos for sure. of it to them and stuff, so. It's just kind of like selling it and but also just kind of like promoting it and yeah. marketing learning yeah. some new marketing channels cool. and stuff so cool it was a really great first job and 
it just kind of like propelled my passion for travel, like awesome. something that I was already really stoked about. And then what did you think of Prague when you actually got there? I've oh heard amazing God. things. I haven't it's been before. still like, I was just back there. I hadn't, I spent two years living there okay. and wow. just went back recently. And it's just, it's surprisingly gotten more beautiful. Wow. Because tourism has picked up. They've like reinvested a lot of like that tourist money back into like restoring the, you know, the best things sure. to see in Prague. So things have even gotten more beautiful. So wow. It's, I think one of the most, beautiful cities on earth. And I do have to, I do have to ask you because I love Italy. Where was your first place? What was the first city that you studied abroad in, in Italy? In uh, Bergamo. Okay. It's 45 minutes outside of Milan. Why? Wow. So awesome. It's a really like hundred, I think it's like 200,000 people, okay. but it's a, just a beautiful town. Like they actually have a Ryanair airport. That's yeah, like the, the Milan. So if you're like trying to book a cheap flight, Cool. You fly into that airport, which is well. That's convenient for traveling. You right. guys just go to yeah. the airport and yeah, get some like dollar euro yeah. flights. <laughs> <laughs> Ryanair is insane. Have you ever taken Ryanair no. before? Uh, it's like they they sh they shove you in there. You feel like cattle a little yeah. bit. Ryanair. They don't give you anything. Everything they charge for, like it's tough. It is wow. cheap though. Like yeah. I've gotten flights on there for like less than five euros. Yeah, jeez, like, it's really cheap and. If you play by their rules, it's actually like they're pretty good airline. Like they have like some of the most on time like uh, statistics and stuff. So like if you play by their rules, you can actually get some really cheap flights. Yeah. And don't get upsold. That's that's the whole yeah. thing. You oh, have to really? pack really light because they charge you for every bags. Bag, right? They charge you for everything, yeah. right? So printing your ticket. Yeah, yeah. The whole <laughs> thing is like don't get upsold. And it was funny. I was on a Ryanair flight in Europe at one point, and it was a night flight, and everyone was trying to sleep, and they just like throw on the lights. And they're just going what? around selling to everyone. Uh, and I remember I had my I had my eyes closed and I was sleeping. And they were like, she tapped me on the shoulder. She's like, Do you want to buy this? I'm like, No, just leave me alone. <laughs> just let me sleep. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so, yeah. so what what's really cool about you, Swig, is that you know a lot of people go about this location freedom digital nomad thing by starting an online business or getting a remote job. Right. What you do differently, and you actually wrote a whole book about this, which became a bestseller, was how to do it more so finding a job in the location and working around the world, not working virtually, but actually going in and being a part of the culture, being a part of right. you know the university or a different job. So what kind of propelled you to start doing that? I know, you're, you know your first one was obviously the internship. Did you jump into a job after that? What happened? Yeah, so right towards the end of my college experience, I was like um, looking for the corporate jobs. Like I think I had an offer from Pepsi and a few other like cool corporate side, but I was just like, so wanting to go down this other path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm taking a, a group of students over to Prague this summer. So I graduate in May and, you know, have to be in Prague by like May 15th or something wow. um, to get ready for, for this new batch of students, which was around 45 of them. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I just like, I just think I can make this work. I'm going to show up in Prague. I booked a one-way ticket and I'm just like, all right, maybe I was like too optimistic that I'd be able to just show up and find a job. Yeah. But I had some like resources. I had some good contacts. Like I'd been working with the university in Prague for two years and built up just good relationship because, mm. you know, we, we've built this program from seven students to 45. So yeah. they'd seen that. Some credibility there. Yeah, exactly. So you as soon as I, soon. as soon as I got there, that's the first people I talked to. I was like, Hey, I'm looking for a job here in yeah. Prague. Uh, in Europe, is there anything, you know, you can help me out with? And I think it's just so important to utilize your network. Wow. And, you know, they came back to me a few weeks later uh, and they're like, yeah, we'd love for you to teach financial economics and to start your own course here and like start it from scratch. Wow. That's and so I cool. was like, all right, you know, I had two years teaching experience through the University of Missouri, but this was kind of like wow. a whole new experience, like creating your own course, your own, your own format for right. that. That's a lot of work. So it was a really great experience. And I ended up working a full academic year um, teaching cool. in Prague. And I honestly loved it, but I, I just was looking, you know, three, four years down the road. Yeah. And I was like, is teaching something I want to do? Like, do I want to continue being a professor? Like, yeah. Sure. Uh, and it was great. Like, I loved the experience. If I had to go back, 100% would do it again. For sure. But I was just looking for that next kind of like stepping stone. You saw where that path was going right. and it wasn't necessarily. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't right something one. that I was like super stoked about. Mm -hmm. So I have a question around because you were looking, you kind of had two paths, right? Fork in the road, Pepsi over here, or you can go do this. What was the pull to go do the Pepsi job? Was right. it like pressure from family, pressure from? Yeah, I think it was just kind of like the easy route. Okay. Honestly, like mm. this was just unknown, like, you know, <clears throat> unknown, like going to Europe and not really knowing the language, knowing like how to even get a job. And then there's the whole visa aspect, which makes things complicated. Whereas like, 
all right, here's a job. It's a good company. It's like, you know, you're going to start off with this much money. And then like after a certain time, like it's kind of a linear progression. So I think it was just like one was un- undefined and the yeah. other one was like more set out for you. And um, a little for, more adventure. Yeah, exactly. So the more, <laughs> chose the more adventurous route for sure. We'll give you the confidence to do that because I think a lot of people that watch our show, oftentimes when people are writing me, they're like, I want to do this, but I just don't, I don't feel confident. Right. Like what, what allowed you to say, okay, I'm going to take the road. That's maybe less traveled, more risky. Right. I think for me, my, my like risk progression kind of increased because I started off, you know, studying abroad that gave me like my, my introduction to it. Then I did some like trips on my own and just kind of like slow stepped into it where at this point I was like, you know, two years later, I'm like, no, no worries at all. Like I'll figure it out. Like yeah. I just had so much more like self confidence to wow. be able to travel to to places on my own. I wow. think solo travel, like after you've mm-hmm. experienced that, like after you showed up in a country or city where you know nobody, you don't yeah. know the language, like you don't even know what money they really use. Like, yeah, uh, I think having that confidence is something you can build with travel. For sure, and mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys have experienced that yeah. in your own right. Yeah, own way. solo travel. I I would recommend it to everyone right. it's it's so important to show up to a place like you said not know anyone not know the language maybe even not know how to get to your hostel or your hotel right. and like go through the experience of let me figure this out and the only person i can depend on is myself and that's where it builds that confidence and um Definitely. yeah i've i've really appreciated those trips and now that you're saying it, i'm actually even thinking about like i want to do that more often mm-hmm. like even though i've been traveling now with friends and and you know traveling with a partner in the past i'm like I need to book a solo a solo trip yeah. because it brings up all these little like minor fears, these little insecurities that come up and right. build that connection with yourself, which is powerful. So yeah, I normally see like with people I talk to, there's kind of like three main fears. It's like, you know, I, I can't do it on my own. I need a partner. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I'm waiting for my friend to do this. I'm like, you just can't wait for your friend. For sure. Like you just gotta <laughs> yeah. book it and like go do it. If they're if they're gonna join in, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing's time. Yeah. People just don't have the time. They just can't figure out like how to do it. That's their job only gives them so much vacation. Sure. And then the third like kind of barriers is money. Yeah. And I think those are kind of the the three main things I see with people preventing people from starting their journeys. And sure. I think that's something we can we can talk more in depth about. Yeah, I would love to. I've heard the money one a lot from people. Right. What are your What are your thoughts on that? I have some ideas myself, but when people are like, oh, I don't have money to go and travel, it's um. What do you what do you think about that's that excuse? Yeah, I think it's I think yeah. it's definitely an excuse. Yeah. Like I I don't know that there's any you kind of have to figure out what that right milestone is for you. Yeah. But for me, I I showed up to like Australia, Sydney, Australia, yep. with five grand in my bank account. That's it. Didn't have a job. And it's very expensive there. This for was like don't know. back yeah. in the, when the exchange rate was terrible. So it was yeah. like three grand in U.S. Like actual when you converted yeah. everything. Yeah. And, in fact, it in living expenses. Wow. So it just like motivated me to find a job like so much faster. For sure. So I found like a, a really great like marketing job at a startup nice. um, within like seven days. Wow. I was just hustling 10 hours a day applying for jobs. You burned the boats. You didn't have an option. You right. needed to, <laughs> yeah. you needed to it's get the job. sink or swim. Yeah. So let's talk about that because a lot of people think that traveling, being location independent is having a virtual job, having something that you can work from anywhere. You did it a different way. You were like, I'm going to go to this city. I'm going to find a job. So if someone wants to do that, what are your tips? If you don't have an existing network like you did, what would you do? Right. Yeah. So for Prague, I I definitely had a network there, but in Australia I had some friends, but it was one of those things. Like I had a network of friends there, but I didn't have a, a, like a professional, professional network. Right. So it was one of those things I just showed up and just started applying for jobs. Like, and the great thing with Australia and New Zealand, and especially if you're from America, you have a lot of options called working holiday visas. Yeah. So if you're under 30 and you know, you're know you looking to work in another country, you can go to Australia. You can actually go to New Zealand for a year and work for wow. any New Zealand company. For, wow. Without like, it's free. Like the visa for New Zealand is, is actually free. That's so cool. That's so I wish more people knew about that. Yeah, that's one yeah. thing. Like that's why one of the reason I wrote the book was to kind of expand on this options that a lot of Americans have and they just don't realize it. Sure. Um, so it's a good opportunity to expand your network, your international network to grow your career. A lot of people do show up in these countries and they just get like fruit picking jobs or yeah. like Waitress. working at a, yeah, working at a, a coffee shop. Sure. Um, so I try to like expand on those. Like if you're going to spend a year of your life, like why not make more money? get yeah. more like personal development yeah, and like just get a job that's going to further your career instead of a job where you're just spending a year 
to just get that money. You're, you're yeah, replacing time, time for money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really smart. Like, and you probably you probably have a better actual natural experience doing that too. Yeah. Because you're really living what it's like to be an Australian for a year, working in a company, right. me, making friends, doing work activities, things like that. So I like that that aspect. It takes a little more research on the front end, but Definitely. well worth it. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that there's so many people showing to those countries looking for the fruit picking jobs. Yeah. That you kind of like differentiate yourself. For sure. Like, I think Australia and New Zealand, they actually have like a really good stereotype for americans like yeah. we're hard workers like we're gonna jump in there and just like help the company succeed and, yeah, that's right. and that's kind of the experience i had in new zealand and australia yeah. so i think just using that to your advantage is, is a really great thing to do i think a lot of people have that stereotype it's what? definitely here like americans you guys work really hard yeah. europeans <laughs> have money, that money driven yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah. europeans have that even our our assistant here she's colombian she's like well, I'm working for an American company, which means you work more hours, you right. work harder. harder. So yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a huge benefit people have in showing up to a place where they can get a free visa is like, yo, I'm American. We're used to working hard. We're right. used to putting in a lot of effort. So yeah, use that to your advantage when you're trying to do the interview and stuff. Just for show sure. them that you're gonna help, like they're gonna hire you so you can help the company. Yeah. So actual like step by step, you get off the plane in Australia. How do you find the job? Is it online? Is it like walking into offices? How did you find it? What's the best way? Right. So they have like a similar, I'm, I know a lot of people use monster.com. They have a similar like version of that. It's called Seek. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's kind of how I found my job. They also have a Craigslist alternative called, I think it's called Gumtree. Okay. okay. So my book outlines all of these resources and I actually have a, a page that I can share nice. with you that kind of breaks down. Here's the resources to find a job, a non like, I don't know, fruit picking job yeah. in Australia and New Zealand. <laughs> cool. So I definitely have a lot of resources and each country kind of varies. But yeah, it's just essentially stepped off the plane, went to my place and just like broke out my laptop and started applying for jobs. Like yeah. there's a lot of stuff you can do behind before you get there. Like you can start applying for jobs if you want to beforehand, but yeah. you kind of need a few things. Like you need a bank account, you need a tax ID number yeah. and a lot of that stuff you have to get while you're in the country. For sure. So it does make it a little bit harder because like, you know, I got the job and then the next week they want to interview you or like that same week they want to interview you. So if you're not there, they're just not going to be. Yeah, there's only so much you can do remote right. for, for them to want to hire. That's that that's a good point. But I think just prepping your resume, like, you know, Australians have different formatting and stuff. So they call it a CV yep. and just doing a lot of those things. Like you can actually apply for your tax number beforehand. Wow. So there's some things you can do, but you just kind of got to go and like get there. And one of the cool things is like when I booked my flight out to Australia, I utilized travel hacking. So I, yeah. I booked for like 20,000 points and it was like $52 in taxes. Um, so that's what you, that's what you paid $52 yeah. for the flight. That's a long flight for 52 yeah. bucks. So, I, and I stopped in Hawaii for three days. That was wow. like kind of like another travel hacking, like, you know, step by step. So cool. So I got to stop in Hawaii for three days and yep. it didn't cost me anything extra. Wow. So incredible. It was, it was a pretty cool experience. Just like the journey out to Australia yeah. was already like a Hawaii place I'd never been and to. And knowing you're not paying for a flight, knowing that there's this big unknown when you get right. there too, that's that's got to be a lot of anticipation and excitement. Yeah, for that. definitely. Let's talk a little bit more about travel hacking because so you wrote your first book, which is like becoming a global citizen, right? And right. where you're helping people find jobs in other countries. But now you have a course that you're creating on travel hacking what is travel hacking for people who don't actually know right so the the main definition is just utilizing like credit cards to build a lot of points and utilizing like your natural spending habits or maybe even manufactured spend yep so most people believe it's just the credit card aspect but i think there's kind of like three core tiers to travel hacking so it's like one with credit cards Mm -hmm. you're getting these sign up offers and getting lots of points yeah and then two is like other things like without credit cards. So like we mentioned earlier about mistake fares. So a lot of times airlines will forget to put a zero. Wow. So instead of that $2,000 flight, it's they're selling it for 200. Wow. And if you're able to book that, there's a lot of cool like services you can use to find those. To flights. find those. Okay. So they're spending like eight, 10 hours a day. So you don't actually have to be doing that. Yeah. They'll send you an email where, hey, this mistake fares out. You know, I see that you're living in Miami or New York. You can yeah. hop on this and like, it'll send you that, that email. And then the third aspect is just becoming a better traveler, like traveling light, finding a setup that works for you, like traveling with experiences. I think that's like one of the most important things is to plan your trips with like kind of life-changing experiences that don't have to be that expensive. 
Mm. Uh, so that's kind of like the three main areas. And that's yeah. kind of what the course, it goes through all of these like aspects of travel hacking. Nice. I want to touch, I want to touch on the third one. Cause I think that's really interesting. The experience is one. I, I, I know when I caught the travel bug for myself, I was living in Sweden at the time and I was like in the middle of the archipelago, which is like all these islands that go out to the ocean. And I was like on an old, what you'd think of like a riverboat in the US. So like this old style boat, there was an old band playing and I was there and, and I had this moment, like this feeling, I call it travel magic, where I was just there on the deck and I'm like, I'm from California. How the fuck am I in Sweden right now? Right. I'm, I'm listening to like a 50s, 60s style band and I'm in this completely different place with no one that I know. And I remember like those experiences, that those travel magic experiences really help connect me with me and really make me love that. So what, what are some of those experiences that you've maybe had where you're like, damn, this is like, you're pinching yourself when you're there. Yeah, there's been a few of them. And uh, I think each experience, like we try to plan every one of our trips around experience. So yep. just recently we were in Iceland. So like for us, it was seeing the Northern Lights. Cool. Like that was like the big experience. And we had like a crazy experience. Our tour got canceled like four days in a row. Wow. And we had to, we actually left Iceland not wow. seeing the Northern Lights. And that was like the main reason we booked the trip. And we're, we're like, all right, we're going to go travel around, do some other cool stuff. Cool. So we went to like Latvia, Lithuania. Yeah. Did dog sledding, like cool experience wow. like that. And, um, and then we drove a tank in Lithuania. No way. <laughs> a tank. Yeah. So they let us drive a tank. It was like a hundred dollars. Your, your, your eight year old uh, self would have loved that. I'm oh sure. My God. Right? And my 30 year old self. Yeah. I appreciate it a lot. So just tr being able to plan those experiences yeah. around your trip. So driving a tank, it was like this package where you get to drive a tank for like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Whoa. And they don't ask for anything. Like it was just Lithuania. They don't ask if you have a driver's <laughs> license or anything. No like, ID, no waiver signed, whatever. Right. So it was just kind of like, here you go. Here's a massive tank. Yeah. And mm -hmm. luckily we did like after that, we flew back to Iceland, had one more night there cool. and we're able to see the Northern Lights. And wow. it's just, it's a magical experience, something that like I'll remember for the rest of my life. Wow. And it wasn't that crazy expensive. I think our tour was like 60 bucks or something. Oh, cool. that's so amazing. It was like a small tour that we booked. And yeah, it's being able to have those things and like capturing photos and memories around those for experiences sure. for sure are something that I'm personally going to cherish for like the rest of my life. Yeah. Be yeah. able to share with your kids and right. That's cool. Exactly. How about some travel mishaps maybe some trips that didn't go that well <laughs> showed up it wasn't what you're expecting i'm sure after 80 countries there's been some of that oh yeah life. so there's one that really comes to mind and this is something that i always <laughs> preach is like i'm like the guy the first person who's going to tell you like why are you using cash like get a credit card yeah. like, get the points get the bonuses mm. but then again on the other side i'm like cash is king no matter where you're at like yeah you need to have like two three hundred dollars in cash at all times Lo local currency yeah yeah yep. But if you don't have the, like, if you're just showing up and you don't have local currency, like you need to have either like American dollars, uh, pounds or euros, because mm -hmm. those three currencies, they'll exchange in like almost any country. Yeah. And so this was the experience that I had, like I've showed up in Tokyo and the way their train situation set up is a lot of the trains are owned by different companies. So okay. they have like, you know, government one, owned ones, they have private, privately owned ones. And I booked my first like 45 minute train. I, I used credit card for that. Yeah. And I, but I had to transfer onto like a local train and I didn't have like any local currency. Uh, Japan is one of these countries where they have like weird ATM structures. You can't just go to any ATM and get out cash. Yeah. So I tried like three or four of the ATMs. You have to go to a 7-Eleven of all places no in way. Japan. To, like, I didn't know they had 7-Eleven. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're huge there and they're actually really nice. But that's like one of the main places you can get these international ATMs to withdraw money yeah. and there's just no way to pay with credit card at this local train. So I was like, all right, I need to get some cash out. Couldn't find an ATM, but luckily I found an exchange place. Wow. And it was just one of these things. I was like, I think I had to piece together like all these different currencies to like get my tickets. <laughs> <and stuff. But laughs> Change just three like, currencies, lose a bit on each exchange. Right, yeah. Yeah. So it just goes back to like that advice. I was like, always try to have like two, $300 in cash. Cause you never know like what scenario you're going to be <laughs> in. And, you know, like whether it's the machines broken for the credit card or the yeah. ATM, like in my situation where it just wasn't working, yeah. uh, you just need to have cash. And that was like one of those mishaps where I was just like stuck between these two train lines, like something out of a movie. I was like, I couldn't like get what out I here. do. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, uh, there's definitely a lot of things that can go wrong, but if you plan correctly, like there's just so many ways that you can 
reduce your risk. Like sure. you're never going to get rid of all your risk, but for sure. That makes sense. How about yeah. you? Have you had some travel mishaps as well? I, I had one, one that was really inconvenient. The, um, I don't know if you teach this in your course, but it's essentially like I bought a flight that had a connection that I was only going to the first leg. Right. I yeah. wasn't going to go to the second leg. What, what, what is that skip? What do they call it? Skip, skip lag. Skip, skip lag. lag. Okay. So uh, apparently this is like, I didn't know it at the time. I just saw it online. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Let me try it. And I ended up finding a flight that was like significantly cheaper to go from New York to Miami. Um, and then it was going to go after Miami. It was going to go somewhere in South America. I don't remember. And so I booked this ticket and the, the, you can't check a bag because yeah. your bag's going to go to the final destination. Yeah. So I'm just having a carry on and I get to the gate and they're like, Hey man, you're going to have to check your carry on. And I was like, no, I'm not. And they're like, there's no room on the overheads. Like you got to go under the thing. And I'm like, no well, I, I'm not going to the final destination. They're like, Oh really? You're not why did you book the final destination? And I was like, oh, I had a change of plans and you know, all this stuff, yeah, I'm trying to like bullshit my way yeah. out of it. And they're like, sorry, dude, your, your bag's going to the final destination. And so no. they took it and they sent it to South America and it literally took me like two or three days <laughs> oh, to like recover the bag, get them to fly it back on the next flight, get it to Miami. So I was like without any clothes for like two or three days. So I don't know, is there a better way to do that where you don't run into that problem or? Use points. It's, yeah, it is definitely <laughs> tough. Like, yeah, definitely use points. I don't, the skip lagging thing is like so controversial yeah. uh, because of that same thing. And I travel with just a carry on too. And I've most of the time they just like, I'm like, Hey, I can fit it under my seat. So if you have a bag that size yep. where you're doing the skip lagging where they're like, Hey, I can fit it under my seat. You don't need to put it in the overbin compartment. Yep. And I've also heard that people are like, I've got $10,000 in valuables here. I yep. need like a written statement that you're going to be able to insure this. Oh, uh, and like good. most people are like, All right, that's a vet right. move right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know about that. That's good. So there is a few tactics for like not having them check your bag, but it is tough. Like those situations, I've been in those two where they're just like, whatever. No matter what they say, they've been instructed to like take everyone's bag, and they're not. Yeah. Gonna, no matter what you say, for sure, they're just for gonna sure. check it. I, I, and I, sometimes they almost like they want to take it. I've noticed that with the airport yeah. people, they're like, oh, you don't want to take it? No, we're taking yeah. it. You know, so you have to be careful. A little power tripping. Yeah, power tripping. The, the other thing that I noticed was like, okay, had I paid extra to be like one of the first people to board the plane, right. there would have been room and that would have sure. been an extra like 15 bucks or something like that. I was yeah. like, okay, from now Pick on. Pick a better seat. Yeah, if, if I'm ever going to do this skip lag thing again, I'm going to pay for the, you know, the extra get on the plane first. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. So you've been to 80 plus countries what makes you spend part of your year in Medellin? I think uh, I'm curious about that. I know my reasons, but what yeah, do you think? I think there's a lot of good reasons here. And one of them is like the geo arbitrage, like yeah. being able to have an awesome lifestyle at a fraction of the price. For sure. So that's one of the main reasons, like the cost of living here is great. We have a chef, we have maids, yeah. we have drivers, and you could just have like really great apartments and, you know, amenities. Yeah. So all the amenities are like really good. It's also the weather is amazing. Like yeah. the climates around 70 to 75 years uh, year round. Yep. Yeah. So yep. there's no winter here really. Uh, and then lastly, like the community aspect, For sure. there's so many people here that are just like crushing it in whatever like business Avenue they're in. Yeah. Um, so there's that aspect as well. Like the community is yeah. really solid here. And I think that's like probably the thing that drew me the most is just, mm -hmm. there's such a great group of guys and just people in general here. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that too. I think, I think a lot of really good entrepreneurs also go to Asia too, Right. but to find a place as close as, as it is to the U S here with a lot of digital nomads, a lot of entrepreneurs, like you said, cost of living, great weather, all of that, um, does make it a really, really attractive place. Yeah. T time zone too. I know that's like a big one. Like that's part yeah. of the reason why I chose Medellin and not somewhere in Asia is like, when you're running a business that operates on like us business hours yep. if you're in like thailand or, or whatever you're in the middle of the night yep. and it's not really like to me that's hard to run a life like that right so yeah waking up at three in the morning to take a phone call yeah. is not <laughs> conducive <Zombie> yeah <laughs> exactly plus, yeah. plus like the energy here too like yep. I, I talked to a lot of people about this or like as soon as you like fly into the airport it's almost like you can just like feel like a wave of energy it's just a different yep. place out here and I've been trying to figure out what that is. Yep. And I really think it has to do with the biodiversity. So like yep. the amount of different plants, the amount of different animals, like Colombia in and of itself is like probably one of the top yep. biodiverse places on the pla on the face of the earth. Yep. Um, and I think it's cool that they kind of built the city in the jungle. So yep. if you look at Medellin from like, you know, in a plane, it's like a city with buildings, but it's like a, a battle between the buildings and the trees yeah. and everything's kind of, you know, mixed in with each other. I think that definitely helps with the energy here. Yeah. Um, 
For and, one, sure. and one other thing is obviously we talk about this all the time is like the people are so friendly the people are so happy the people For are sure. so focused on like family and experiences and doing fun things yeah um whereas like in europe and us like we're a little more focused on like making money and being productive yeah, yeah especially the u.s yeah, yeah. So it's different cool. priorities for sure yeah, yeah. And, and, so, and i think part of that comes from the people here especially <laughs> in medellin right like they've had this past of a lot of war a lot of violence the the drug cartels all of that and they're coming out of that right we're 25 years out of that yeah and so now people are like just grateful i would say a lot of people here are really just grateful to have a normal life yeah just where, to have peace yeah just that, to have a peaceful place for sure, to live for sure yeah. and in seeing that is like you you feel a different energy here where it's like they're grateful because they're in peace they're grateful because they have a life here where i think sometimes in the u.s we've been so spoiled where it's like i'm not grateful because i'm not driving the ferrari exactly. you know i'm not yeah. grateful because this guy has a nicer house right. or whatever it might be they yeah. take peace for granted yeah. i think for sure because we you know we haven't had wars in our home turf for a long time yeah yeah, yeah. i mean in our generation yeah i mean we've not. never experienced like a full-on war yep. right yeah or at least not in our homeland yeah definitely, kind of thing. definitely not hmm. it's um yeah it's cool man I, I think i think a community like this it's it's nice too to be as close to the states as we are and yeah the people are fun too so yeah i think in this side of the world too it's one of the biggest hubs for like digital nomads yeah. online entrepreneurs so yeah. i've been to a few other places like mexico city Yep. which is another cool hub yep. uh there's like 20 million people there so it's a it's very wild, it? very big difference between mexico city and here mm. so you kind of just need to figure out what what fits your lifestyle like what's yep. going to fit your online business or what you're looking to do so i think that's so important and i don't know if you guys came here like just full on for like i'm going to stay here for a year or two years but like for me it was just i came here for a month tested it out figured out that there was a cool community here yeah. yep and did you guys come here like with that same sort of structure? Yeah. Well, for me, similar. I think I think everyone has a lot of people here have this similar Medellin story. Like I was living in Buenos Aires. I would work out of a, a Colombian coffee shop like every day. <laughs> I became really close with the people who work there and they just kept saying like, go to Medellin, go to Medellin, go to Colombia. And I'm like, I don't know anything about Colombia. Like this, the shit I've heard about it isn't good. Right. I don't know. I just came from Europe. Like, and I, I got off the plane here and within like three or four days, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'm going to be here for a while. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, same thing almost. Um, I mean, I was in Miami before here. And so you've got a big Colombian community there, yeah. a big just South American community. And then I had some friends that came to Medellin, absolutely loved it. And they're like, yo, next time we go, you got to come. And so I did. We went, we came for a month. And it was like, by the end of the month, we're like, let's just stay. This is cool. Like, yeah. you know. <laughs> Why go back? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Getting it's, it's a really It's a really good home, play, a home yeah. base and a good place to travel from as well. For sure. That kind of thing. That makes sense. So, dude, you um, you've got a travel course that or a travel hacking course that just came out. Um, right. Let's dig into a couple like of your favorite little hacks or your favorite little tips that you give people in the course. In yeah. So, like I mentioned earlier, there's kind of like three main areas. So, I'll try to give a tip for each one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, the first one is just use, utilizing credit cards. Awesome. And a lot of people don't know this. They're like, I've talked to a lot of people who are just scared of credit cards for mm -hmm. some reason. Mm -hmm. And I do get like, you need to have a good financial responsibility with using credit cards. And that's something that I talk about in the course is that over a period of time, you can slowly build up good credit yep. and also get free travel out of it yep. and increasing your credit score. So like I have $0 in debt, yep. I have 815 credit score, awesome. I have 16 credit cards. Wow, 16. So, so people that's are, crazy. there's like a lot of myths that was like, you know, you're gonna open up credit cards and ruin your credit score. I was like, no, it's like the opposite. Yeah. The person with one credit card isn't going to be able to get to where I'm at. For sure. You need to build credit and you need to have like a good history of paying off your bills, you know, not utilizing, you know, maxing out your credit cards every yeah. month. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of factors that go into building that good credit. So what's better than like getting free travel and building like a good credit score? For sure. And so like that's... Such and, how, and how much free travel have you gotten with that? Like, are you booking full flights to places round trip? Tell, yeah. us, tell us a little bit about so that. So over the past 10 years that I've been doing like credit card hacking and travel hacking, I've accumulated like $150,000 in free wow. travel. $150,000. Yeah. That's shit. insane. Okay. So that's, that's awesome. like flights, hotels, and just like a lot of other things that you can get for free. Yeah. So it's essentially like if you're not utilizing a credit card for travel related activities, you're just leaving money on the table. Right. Okay. We're so lucky, like from the US, we have so many of these sign up bonuses. So the strategy yeah. is essentially you sign up for a credit card, but you do a research on like, okay, I'm spending this much money in a month 
And most of the sign-up bonuses, you have to spend three or $4,000 within a three-month period. Yep. So you figure out your natural spending habits and then how much of that you can put on a credit card. Yep. So this is money you're already spending. You're not going to have to do anything extra. Yeah. Sure. And then you figure out your credit score. You do some other research to pick a card that fits your spending habits yeah. and something you're going to get the most benefit out of. Awesome. And then you just sign up for that card. Yep. It's that easy. You you meet the sign up bonus. You get you know sixty to hundred thousand points, and those points are good for like a round trip flight to Europe or anywhere else in the world. Wow. And that can happen in three months. Yeah. Three months to a free trip. Yeah, you can do Europe. it faster depending on on what your spending habits are. Yeah. yeah. So the you just kind of keep continue doing this over time, and so a lot of the credit cards have an option for downgrading. Yeah. So you have a card that costs like a hundred dollars a year. Yeah. But if you're not utilizing it, you just signed up for it to get that that fifty thousand yep. you know bonus nice. point sign up. You just downgrade that to a no fee card. So if you cancel your credit card, that's when you impact your credit score. Mm. But in this tactic, you're downgrading to a card that doesn't cost a yearly fee, but you're still keeping that credit. Wow. So it's it, that's like kind of the main strategy for credit card hacking. Okay. And in this course, I teach you all the steps to do this in a safe manner where you're going to be able to build up your credit score and get free travel out wow. of it. And, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize is like your credit report is supposed to prove your reliability borrowing money. Right. And if you have one credit card with a $500 limit, you're not really proving very much to anybody. Like they're going to look yeah. at your report and be like, cool, he's balanced $500 and not messed <laughs> up. But if you have access to say $150,000, $200,000, and then in the future, you go on, you're like, okay, I want to buy real estate now. I want to buy a commercial building. The bank's going to look and go, oh, he's been balancing 200 grand. No problem. Never had a missed payment. Never had any problems whatsoever. Right. Yeah, he's a reliable dude. He knows how to work with his money. And so it's like 16 credit cards sounds crazy, but like I've got close to that. I probably have 15 myself. And yeah. it's like, it's a, it's actually a really good thing to have right. in addition to the benefits. Sure. And employers actually do check your credit. In some job scenarios, they'll oh. run a credit check on you mm -hmm. to make sure that you have like a reliable financial background. Wow. Wow. So it's, it is an important thing to, to start early, start at an early age mm -hmm. sure. and just kind of have like the mindset like, hey, this is I'm not going to spend more money than I have. Like. I even sometimes pay it off on a weekly basis that improves your credit score. And it also just kind of readjusts where you're at. So wow. you know how much money you have in the account, yeah. you know that you're not overspending. Yeah, that's great. And I love your idea of looking at your natural spending habits and being like, can I already even meet this th threshold with it? Right. And if you can't, then it's maybe let me buy something early. Like one of the things I'm looking at now with my credit cards, because I'm trying to accumulate points is like, let me buy things for Christmas early right. so I can get it within the three month window. Yeah. Exactly. Things like that. The other thing is like a lot of, a lot of people that are listening probably have businesses and like we have friends that spend, you know, 50 grand a month on Facebook ads or anything right. else. Like, why is that not on a credit card? Why yeah. are you yeah. collecting points on 50 yeah. grand a month? Like you're crazy not to. And there's some credit cards where like, if you're using the right one for paid traffic, like paid yep. ads, you're going to get four or five times the bonus points. Wow. Um, so it can be really powerful, especially if you have a business and it's not just Facebook, it can be um, Amazon has ads as well. So there's like a lot of different Google categories. All that. Yeah. 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 So cool. So that's tip number one for the for, first for the credit card hacking. Yeah. So okay. I'd say the second tip falls into the category of just like general travel hacking. So you're not utilizing credit cards per se. We kind of touched on it before. It's these mistake fares. Mm -hmm. So picking up mistake fares or just finding cheap flights. So there's a really cool service that I use. It's called Scott's Cheap Flights. Okay. You set your destination or your home base. So like for me, if you guys are here, they don't do international, but yep. you could set Miami. Okay. Or if you're gonna, if you know you're gonna be in like L.A., New York, yeah, or yeah. whatever, and you just figure out like, okay, here's my home base, and they'll send me alerts every time there's a cheap international flight wow. from this from this place. Hmm. So like for Miami, you know, maybe it's Fort Lauderdale nearby or something. Yep. Yep. Uh, I've seen flights for like, that usually cost like two grand. We just got one from, to the Maldives. Wow. So it's usually like a twenty two thousand five hundred dollars for the flight and we got it for 600. It's like- No way damn. to the Maldives. That's yeah. insane, man. And then we get there and we we booked our, uh, the Conrad Maldives with points. Wow. So our, say our whole trip out there is gonna be really cheap. As cheap as you can do the Maldives. For sure. Wow. So like travel hacking is probably gonna cut like, if you were just going to go there full fare, I don't know, it'd probably be like 10, 15 grand. We're going to do it for like two or three grand, like everything all in. Yeah. And how are you making money right now today? I would like people to know a little bit about like what you're doing now. Right. Um, are you running a huge business? Like what, how are you making money to be able to travel and do this? Yeah. So the primary way I make money is through the book sales. So okay. I've got a book, I've got a remote job board. Yep. Uh, so like if you're looking to find a remote job, that's not in technical that's not technical, yep. you can utilize this remote job. So cool. it's like marketing jobs, sales jobs. 
but we're getting money from people who want to promote their jobs on there. Cool. Uh, so primarily through those two aspects. And then uh, obviously the course is out now. So that's yeah. going to be kind of the big, the big money earner, I think, awesome. for the business. Awesome. And we'll put links to all of this, your book, your course. job board, the course, right. all of this in the, in this section below. So anyone watching this, you can you can get links to that. Um, I know one thing you've balanced as well is having a traditional job and traveling. Right. Um, a lot of people think you have to have a remote job to be able to travel. Um, how have you been able to, I guess, balance, or you have to have a non-traditional job to be able to travel. How have you been able to balance what would be considered almost a nine to five, right? but also do traveling? Yeah, I think uh, there's so many different good ways to figure out like how you want to fit in travel to your life. Yeah. And one of the big, big things, the big things I realized is uh, it was around two or three years ago where I was just like going out on my weekends, just like partying a lot, yeah. kind of just like wasting it, to be honest. Sure. I was looking back, I was waking up on Sundays. I was like, man, I didn't accomplish anything. And yeah. like our weekends are 28% of our time. Wow. And I was like, man, okay, if I'm not going out, I can save money yep. and I can travel more. Yep. So that was one of those things where I like, I just realized that I wanted to sacrifice. So I stopped drinking, like completely stopped partying like wow. two years ago, still socializing, still like going out and For like sure. having fun. But I just like was doing it in a different manner that allowed me to spend my weekends traveling. That's cool. So I think it's just one of those things like if you set priority as like a mindset, as yeah. like your number one priority, everything else will like fall into place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That focus is really important. Yeah. I, I love that that idea of not drinking. I, I made a decision like that a couple of years ago myself where I'm like, I'm spending Saturday hungover. I'm spending Sunday right. hungover. There's too many things I love about life that I don't want to spend like you said, 28% of your life right. hung over. Recovering. Yeah, yeah recovering, <laughs> that's it, man. It's tough and like, maybe that's something else in, in their life that's taken up a lot of time where they're not seeing the direct benefits. So you kind of got to just figure out, lay it all out there and see what you can sacrifice, I guess, or what's not really pushing you further. Yeah, yeah. So, so you were telling me before the show that you actually spent an entire month hitchhiking through right. New Zealand, was yeah. it? So the whole South, South Island. Island out, yeah. Yeah. So I guess this is another great, like the third tip is like how you can just travel in cool ways. And like, this is an experience in itself. So I just made it set in my mind that I was going to travel for a month around the whole South Island just by hitchhiking, wow. by not taking any buses or not paying any money. Wow. And yeah, it was, it was a, I love that, man. That's awesome. Yeah. It was just one of these things. Like I had actually dabbled with hitchhiking before. Like I tried it in South Korea, okay. a country that like they have no idea what you're doing. They're like, why is this guy on the side of the road with a sign? <laughs> why is this white dude on the yeah. side of the road? <laughs> and they, if people actually stop. They're like, can I drive you to the bus station? Like, yeah. why don't you just take a bus? It's like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just down the road. It's not that expensive. Yeah. I was like, man, I'm just looking for the experience. Like, I want to meet some cool people that are like going the same way. And that's kind of where my first hitchhiking experience. Cool. And I was like, if I can do it in South Korea, I can do it in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. New Zealand has like one road that just goes around like in a circle for the South cool. Island. So cool. it makes things like logistically pretty yeah. easy. And it's like, where are you going? We're all going on the same road. It's all good. Right. You're either going up or down and yeah. I just stand on the right side of the road. And for me, it was like, yeah, obviously a good way to like save money, but that wasn't the main reason I was doing it. It was like to interact and meet cool people yeah. that I never would have met in my life. And like to be able to like share stories and like they're kind of just getting bored driving yeah. around. They want to yeah. like talk to somebody. For sure. So just meeting like not only New Zealand people, but there's a lot of people who picked me up that were from different countries and had different backgrounds and stuff. So That's it awesome. was a really great experience. And I think uh, one of the cool travel hacks that I figured out while I was doing this, I was sitting in the rain yeah. and just like could not get picked up. People were like, this guy's insane for sitting in the rain. Yeah. So the next day I, I go back and I, I figure out this service <laughs> where for rental cars, yeah. they'll let you for free take a rental car because they want to deliver it back to the city it came oh, from. Wow. And there's a service in New Zealand. So this was the one aspect that I didn't hitchhike, but it was completely free. They wow. just gave me this car to drive back to the next city I was trying to go to. So you just uh, you just wore a kind of an errand boy for them taking right. one car to You didn't have location. to pay any gas or anything. They just gave you the car and like wow. drive it back to this car rental place in the other city and that's it's completely free. <laughs> that's that's so cool. awesome. So that sounds like an incredible experience, you know, hitchhiking, traveling on your yeah. own. What about traveling with other people? Because I know like as soon as I started traveling, I was like, I want all my friends to come with me. Like I want all my boys, like, you know, that kind of thing. And so like, I know you travel now with your girlfriend. Right. How does that work? How did you like transition from traveling alone to with somebody? 
Yeah, I think there's so many different dynamics that come with, you know, solo travel, traveling with friends, traveling like with a partner or a couple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for, you know, obviously you need to find a girlfriend first, right? Yeah. <laughs> step, step, first, step, step one, one. find yeah. a girlfriend. <laughs> so, and actually like, that's how I came to Medellin. Wasn't really looking for a girlfriend because I've just been traveling around so much yeah. that it wasn't a top priority. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to find somebody who, one, kind of shared some passions. Like, cool. you know, I saw, you know, before we met, we met on Tinder, Tinder success story. Nice. Yeah, for, let's go. For like three years, <laughs> but I think it's important, like, you know, before we met, I knew she was into travel. Yeah. Like she, she lived in the U S for a bit. She lived in like Europe. So she had this like passion, like we had some aligning passions. And, um, when we first met up, you know, we just really hit it off. We started talking about traveling and like, we know her travel experiences, my travel experiences found out she just recently been to Missouri where I'm originally wow, from. Cool. Oh, so wow. I was like, this is just, uh, why, you know, why was she in Missouri? <laughs> She has family there. Okay. So she has family in Missouri and, uh, you know, she spent some time, you know, nice. with her family there and she actually just come to Medellin, uh, cool. about nine days before I was leaving to wow. go over to Asia for, uh, one of my, my friend's weddings. Okay. And we just hit it off through those nine days. We we're hanging out every day. And, um, when I went over to Asia, we we're just like, you know, different time zones, but we're still like talking every night. Nice. Uh, it was just one of these things, like it felt right. Like, so I flew back here to try to pursue that relationship. Cool. Mm. And she was just really interested in creating a life where we could travel together. Wow. And, you know, she's my biggest testimonial, testimonial because, yeah. you know, she read the book and was like really kind of convinced like, okay, how can I start doing this? Yeah. And helped her get set up on Upwork to find like some Spanish translation stuff. So cool. like, it doesn't matter where you're from in the world, like you can figure out a way to work remotely, yeah. Yeah. create a freelance lifestyle for yourself and to also travel. Yeah, Upwork's a big first step for that. That's always the first one that I'm recommending to people. Right. It's like, just go create a profile. You yeah, start no matter what, I'm sure there's some skill set. like everyone, you know, you either know how to write or yeah. you know how to like talk. So yeah. like, you can utilize those two skills. <laughs> you sets. know your language, so right. you, can, you can do something with that. Right, so she started off teaching Spanish yeah. and the person she was teaching Spanish for was really impressed and ended up hiring her as like more of like a marketing and sales uh, cool. role. So now she's doing that remotely. That's wow. It's a Salesforce consulting company, which is just wow. a whole nother cool industry she's been able to learn about. For sure. That's so big. Now, now she's able to fund her travels and we're able to travel together. Wow. That's a big thing that stops a lot of people, especially people in like Colombia or other countries besides the United States and Europe is they're like, well, I grew up in this place, which means I can't get, you know, a job doing anything and making enough money to travel and all that. And it's like, you go online and you provide skills to the marketplace, you enter the global marketplace, you right. enter the pay in the global marketplace. Like yeah. there's no barriers as long as you For have sure. an internet connection and you have skills to bring to the marketplace. For sure. Right. And she's, she's able to like drastically increase her income. Like then that, if she were just to take a local job in well, Colombia, so it's yeah, four right. or five times more than the average salary. Wow. by taking an international job because so cool. and gives you location freedom right it's just like plus plus there's just a lot of good benefits yeah. to it so tell me tell me the uh the the fun parts about traveling with a significant other and also the downsides too <laughs> downsides. <laughs> yeah so i think there's so many fun things like just being able to share the experiences with somebody you love yeah. is like it's so great because there's a lot of cool places i've been in the world where i'm either by myself or with people that i've met while i'm traveling and that's still great, a great like dynamic for sure. But being able to share that with somebody you love and somebody yeah. that you're like your best friend and a partner with, yeah, uh, is just really magical. So that's cool. I think that's probably the best part. Uh, yeah, you're in you're in some epic view and some amazing country, and you want to like nudge the person right. next to you and be like, "Look at this! Isn't this insane? <laughs> Enjoy this with yeah, me." Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the downside. Like you know, there's still some downsides. Like it's life, so like things happen. You're yeah. sad or whatever. Like you have somebody else there to like kind of comfort you or to like share your your feelings and emotions with. For sure. uh, I think that's like really some like really powerful. Yeah. yeah. And just having somebody that I love and like care about. And yeah. We're kind of on this same path. Like building something together. Right. So we just lined up, lined out our, our like map of countries that we want to visit in 2020. So wow. we're both planning to visit 20 countries and wow. I'll be hitting my hundredth country while she's hitting her 50th. Wow. That's, uh, that's cool. cool. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a powerful moment. And we're yeah. both really excited about that. Wow. So it's one of your goals to 
travel to every country. Yeah. So what's the total count there? That would so there's be... like 194 countries, I believe. Okay. I just saw there might be adding a new country, but okay. there's different lists. There's like ones recognized by the United Nations and then lists that are just like sovereign nations and stuff. So that's right. yeah, that's the plan is like, I want to go to every country, but I want to do it at my own pace yeah. and in my own style. For sure. And I think that's like one of the things where I kind of like the slow travel where I'm able to spend a few months in a location yeah, yeah. Uh, and then just really kind of get to enjoy the place, like mm-hmm. experience the culture a little bit more in depth than if you're just there for a few days. Yeah. Okay. So to kind of, kind of wrap up, if you were going to talk to somebody in our audience and they have very little travel experience, maybe they just like have lived in their hometown, maybe visited some family in the next state over, that's right. like the extent of their travel experience, but they have this desire inside of them where they want a world travel. They want to try all this stuff what would be the first one, two, three steps that you would tell this person, actionable steps they could take after this podcast to make that happen? Yeah, so I think, you know, money's gonna be the big one. So putting in, start saving, start sacrificing stuff, like put building a fund for your travels, like, mm-hmm. but figure out a, a milestone that's gonna make sense. Because if it's like, you know, you need to save up for five years, no. that's probably not gonna happen. Like, totally. <laughs> so figuring out enough money to get you started. And yeah. like, if you if you already have like that, what, are, what is enough money to get? Because people right. always are like, I need, I don't have 20 grand, right. you know, I need way more money. What is enough money to actually get started traveling and doing this right. in your opinion? So I think for me, it's if you're going to be working in the country, it's yep. like you only need three or four grand to get you past that first, you know, two weeks. Yeah. So you need like, I'd say to pay on the safe side, figure out how much it's going to cost you to spend a month in yeah. that location. Cool. And then just that's your, that's your milestone. Wow. Well, you can always like go back home if you fail or go back, you know, even if you don't, you'll figure it out. So awesome. Yeah. So, so like go out there, but have that backup plan in case it doesn't work out. Right. Um, but I mean, in your experience, you've been able to go pretty much, you know, anywhere you want and find a job. Right. If you really work eight, 10 hours a day when you get there to get that job. Yeah. I think just having that mindset where I'm like, my job is going to be finding a job. Yeah, my job is finding a job. Right. Exactly. So like yeah. spending 50 hours doing yeah. that and I've had really good results. Like, in New Zealand, I found it like in less than a week, I had wow. like three grand in, in the bank account. Wow. And New Zealand's again, another kind of expensive place. So especially if you're American, like look into these options, like the working holiday visas. Yep. Um, so we have, uh, Americans have agreements with New Zealand. It's completely free. You can show up and work there for a year. Yep. Australia is around $400 to get okay. the visa. But again, you can work there for a year. And we have other agreements with Ireland. There's a little bit more restrictions. Like, so yep. if you just finished studying, within a year of completion, you can show them that, um, like your diploma, and you yep. can go and study in Ireland or work there in Ireland. Wow. Um, and we also have uh, agreements with South Korea and Singapore. Wow, Singapore would be amazing. That's yeah. very cool, that's awesome. Very expensive location, but yeah. if, you're able to, if you're able to work there, like imagine making the Singapore uh, salary, yep. but then traveling to places like KL or like surrounding yep. areas, you can work for three to six months and then travel for like the next year. Wow, that's so incredible. Sweet. Awesome. There's a lot of options. So yeah, for that person just starting off, I would kind of figure out like look into these working holiday visas, see if yeah. that's an option. So decide if you want to work locally or yep. if you want to try to find a remote job. Mm-hmm. So once you kind of fall into one of those two categories, you know, you just need to figure out what location you want to go to. And cool. obviously if you're going to go to a remote job, I would say try to start off somewhere like Southeast Asia or South America where the cost of living for sure can just you can live for so 1200 a month right. and live comfortably and that's easy to make online right and that's why that's why it draws so many business owners to these places yep. is because if they're in new york or miami their runway might be like a few months yep. before they go out of business yep. but if they go to chiang mai thailand or sure. even live very comfortably for like fifteen hundred dollars yeah your yeah. runway is just like six months to 12 years if you're, you're, buying, 12, you're 12 buying time yeah, really? exactly. Yeah, that's it, man. So I think just kind of getting that, you know, once you've decided where to go, just booking it and trying to like utilize travel hacking to get the, the flight for the cheapest possible way. Yeah. And that's something that my course helps people with is figuring out how they can get those two, $300 or even a free flight internationally. Yeah. Cause and that's usually the bulk of your expense. Let me, let me ask you a little bit about that course. So that dropped just like a week ago, right? right. Brand new for you, hot yeah. off the press, yeah. all, all the right tactics, the newest <laughs> yeah. tactics. Up, updated yeah. for today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, brand new, it's 40 different videos. Wow. So. And, and can I ask how much that is? So it's gonna be 499. 499, okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, bucks. the main thing is that this course is going to teach you to get at least $5,000 in free travel. So wow. it's got that ROI aspect. Wow. wow. 
Wow. And how are you helping people with that? You're showing them the tactics on buy this course for 495 bucks, get $5,000 worth of travel right. coming right out of it. That's, that's yeah. a no brainer. That's awesome. That's yeah. Sweet. And I'm going to be there like helping people. So I'll have like monthly Q and A. So cool. we have a community aspect to it, private Facebook group. So if you do buy the course, you'll be able to ask questions and I'll be able to help you out as wow. well. So wow. it's, uh, you're not in it alone. There will be like other people in the community, including myself. Cool. That's awesome, bro. That's great. Man. And then tell them about your book, the, the title of the book, everything like that, the tagline. Um, and it's available on Amazon. I know that. We'll right. Leave a, we'll leave a link inside the show notes as well. Definitely. So it's a number one best-selling book on Amazon. It's cool. called Global Career, How to Work Anywhere and Travel Forever. Awesome. So awesome. essentially the book just outlines like what I've done to progress over the years. Cool. And shows you all the options from finding internships, studying abroad, or even finding international jobs. And then there's a whole nother chapter dedicated just finding remote jobs. So well, wow. very there's cool. There's a lot man. of good good options for no matter what you're looking for, or what stage you're at. Yeah, Incredible. it's such a cool little niche that like, I don't know anyone else that's covering the actual international jobs or international internships. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I agree. So, really cool, man. You've been you've been a complete resource of, of knowledge for us on this. I appreciate you sharing yeah. on camera and off camera with me yeah. on this and uh, really coming in, dropping some knowledge for our audience. Guys, this is great knowledge. If you're interested in travel hacking, you want to get $5,000 in free travel credit, definitely get uh, Swig's course. It's going to be a uh, it's going to be great, man. Swig's your guy. And then, so you've got the course, you've got the book. How do people find you on Instagram, all that kind of stuff, your website? Yeah, so the, the best website to go to is just globalcareerbook.com. Okay. Um, or you can reach out to me on Instagram, Swig cool. Meets World. Uh, cool. That's where I'm really active, always posting like travel photos and awesome. videos and stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Good stuff, bro. All right, brother. Well, hey, man, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. I learned a ton already. Yeah. I'm sure our audience did it, as well. And uh, let's get to it, guys. We'll have a good rest of the day. And um, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao. See ya. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Good shit, dude. Boom. Thanks, man.